so we continue with our thermodynamics as usual and today we want to talk about uh, an, an interesting criteria an interesting function that can be used to predict spontaneity now what are the characteristics of a spontaneous process now it is not just the direction of uh, enthalpy change or internal energy change that drives spontaneous change so these are spontaneous processes in nature suggest that energy appears to be degraded into a more and more disorganized form in spontaneous processes meaning that spontaneous processes tend to be characterized by um, a situation where energy goes from a more from a, from one form to a more disorganized form right also, spontaneous processes um, proceed towards states which are more probable. For example, imagine you have a, a stack of bricks, as shown here, and let's say you have some bricks in a bag, rather. Let's say you have some bricks in a bag. If you should empty the, the bricks from the bag, then of these two arrangements, Clearly, the one on the left is more probable when the bricks um, exit the bag. And so what you find is that the more probable arrangement is the most likely one and therefore represent the direction of spontaneity. That is, bricks moving from the bag to basically, let's say, the floor or the surface of the desk. The, the, the situation on the left is more probable and this represents um, a spontaneous process. The one on the right is not impossible but is just a very low uh, probability and so would not represent a spontaneous change in um, the bricks going from the bag to the situation on the right that 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 process does not represent a, a spontaneous uh, change now the criteria which we are referring to is called entropy and you know, it was um, the idea of disorder and randomness um, was basically formalized or uh, basically put into focus by Boltzmann in the, um, you know, in the, in the 1800s. Now, entropy is related to the, is related to the probability of occurrence of various arrangement of atomic slash molecular system, molecular systems and the randomness of its entropy that's the randomness of its energy rather so entropy basically speaks to randomness it speaks to um disorder and boltzmann said that look the entropy s which is represented by s is equal to k which is the boltzmann's constant times the uh, natural log of the probability of a particular arrangement so w is like a probability function probability that um, a particular arrangement of the energy in a system um, occur, um, occurs or exists. Now, the Boltzmann distribution is an equilibrium distribution of energy. It represents equilibrium distribution of energy, the most likely um, situation. Now, it is formalized, as you can see here, by this equation, Ni over N naught is equal to the exponential of the uh, negative of the difference in energy between any two arrangements of course divided by the Boltzmann's constant and the thermodynamic temperature which is in um, Kelvin so this formula basically tells you that if you are considering the energy distribution between any two states right you need the energy difference between them to calculate that distribution or you could you could think of it like the distribution of particles among any two energy levels right so you can think of you could under you could um, interpret this to mean distribution of particles among any two energy levels or distribution of any two energy energy levels among particles so Boltzmann distribution and um, allows you to make an assessment of this type of situation and this is just an energy um, a little diagram basically illustrating um, what, uh, um, what, what we are discussing and let's say for example you're looking at E1 energy level 1 and energy level 2 once you know the difference in energy between those two levels you can get an idea of the relative distribution of particles uh, between those two energy levels or the distribution of those two energy levels among a, 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 a certain number of particles 
same thing once you know the energy difference between them you can make an assessment at a given temperature of how the particles are distributed between any two energy levels and that's what Bo that's what the Boltzmann um, um, distribution relationship here um, speaks about <clears throat> now if we look back look more into entropy all right if we look at two states of a system as it changes spontaneously from, for example, WI to WF, we can see that the entropy change is equal to KLN W final minus KLN W initial. That is, the two states which are in question, the final state and the initial state, is equal to the entropy change. Now, the thing is, entropy change must be positive for a spontaneous process. If the process is to be classified as spontaneous, then entropy change must be positive. That is, the system must be moving from a state of order to a state of disorder. Or, or you could say that the system must be uh, becoming um, increasingly disorderly if we are talking about a spontaneous um, change. That is... The state to which the system is going, that is the final state, must be more probable than the initial state. Uh, Boltzmann inferred from the way that W is affected by heat and work, and this is where he's basically now creating an equation that allows calculation of the entropy change of a system from the heat and temperature. He inferred... Um, that uh, delta S for a process, which is the entropy change for a process, is directly related um, to the heat transferred in the process and inversely related to the temperature at which the heat is transferred. Hence, we have a formulation for the reversible transfer of heat, right? Reversible transfer of heat at a certain temperature being equal to um, entropy change. And this is basically this is basically the, the, the sec formulation of the second law of thermodynamics. And of course, this is where the this formula is for when the temperature is constant. Oh, however, um, what if the temperature is changing? What if the temperature is changing? Well, entropy change then is equal to basically C P L N T final over T initial. Now, how did we come by that? Well, if the temperature is changing, then we have to integrate. This expression, right? Integrate the earlier expression derived by Boltzmann, Boltzmann for entropy change. I have to integrate between limits of the two temperatures in consideration. And after integration, seeing that we'll be integrating one over, we'll be taking the integral of one over t between limits, then we end up with delta S is equal to Cp ln t final over t initial. Now, just to back up a bit, one might wonder, where did the Cp dt come from? Remember what Q is. Q is equal to Cp delta T if we're dealing with constant pressure, heat. So Cp dt is the same thing as Q, right? And so basically what we have done is to move the Q a little, the Cp a little bit further away and have dt over T. And so we can integrate between our limits to get um, the change, to get the change in entropy um, as uh, temperature changes. Now, so the second law of thermodynamics, uh, sometimes we say that, the, you know, you know is it is related by that um, relationship um, that we just discussed. Now, the entropy of an isolated system, like I said earlier, increases um, when a spontaneous change occurs in the system. Or, you could say that for a spontaneous process, the entropy must increase. However, however, there is an important situation or important requirement, rather. The system must be isolated. If the system is not isolated, then there will be trouble. Now, now remember what an isolated system is. An isolated system is one that does not allow exchange of either matter or energy with the surroundings all right so that is important so for an isolated system entropy change must be greater than zero for a spontaneous isolated system all right for a spontaneous isolated system the converse is true meaning that for a non-spontaneous process delta s is less than zero that is it is negative that is the system is moving from a state of disorder to a state of order. And that is non-spontaneous. That is non-spontaneous. 
If the system is at equilibrium, however, the change in entropy is equal to zero. That is, there is no change in entropy. It's at a stationary point. The final entropy is equal to the initial entropy. And so, entropy change for the isolated system is equal to zero. All right? And it's important to say, to, 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 to ensure that we are dealing with the isolated system. If not, then this criterion will not work. Now, let's apply the second law to perfect gas processes. Now, recall the definition of reversible processes. All right? these, are, um, uh, 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 these occur with the system at equilibrium everywhere. That's what, reverse, that's what a reversible system is. A reversible system is one that is at equilibrium at every step. All right? That's a reversible system, one that is at equilibrium at every step. All right? So one can expect then that delta S, so for a reversible process then, which is always at equilibrium, then delta S must always be equal to zero. Now, let's see. Let's see if the entropy criterion works for isothermal reversible processes. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we will um, formulate and the formulation will give us zero. Well, isothermal reversible process. Well, remember that um, delta S is equal to Q reversible over T. And if we rearrange that equation a little bit, then we get Q reversible is equal to T delta S. All right. Now, remember that isothermal um, really means that uh, any heat lost is equal to a gain in work. So if the system loses 50, let's say 50 kilojoules of energy is lost, heat energy is lost, and the system must regain that um, amount of energy by doing 50 kilojoules, by having 50 kilojoules of work done on it. And so what you find is that for an isothermal process, delta U is equal to zero. So just reminding ourselves. Now, remember that work, remember that work is equal to... Um, minus nrt ln v final over v initial all right which means then that q which means that q is equal to nrt ln v final over v initial all right not minus nrt ln v final over v initial but nrt ln v final over v initial that is what q um is equal to now since Delta S is equal to Q divided by T, then clearly delta S is equal to NR ln V final over V initial. Because if you take the expression right, for Q, which is equal, which is basically NRT ln V final over V initial, and put that expression over T, then the T the T's will cancel away, the temperatures will cancel away, and you find that the entropy change then is equal to NR ln V final over uh, V initial. This is strange because delta S for such a system, isothermal reversible system that is, should be equal to zero. Why is it not equal to zero is the question. Right? Meaning that when we formulate when we came up with this formulation, the formulation should be equal to zero. Why is it not equal to zero? This is because we are not dealing with an isolated system. We are dealing with an isothermal system. Okay? And isothermal systems are not isolated because remember, isothermal system is able to exchange heat energy with its surroundings in maintaining uh, a, a fixed temperature. And so in order for, as mentioned earlier, the entropy criterion only works when you're dealing with an isolated system. How can we remedy this problem? How can we fix this problem? Why is this system uh, our entropy change is not zero. As we said earlier in the previous slide, it is that the we were not is that we were not considering an isolated system. That was the problem. Now, how can we then constitute an isolated system? Now, an isolated system could be constituted by considering the system and its surroundings. Now, let's say the system was a beaker. And its surroundings, it, it was situated in a water bath. Then we could consider the system plus the water bath, and that would constitute an isolated system. Why is that? Whatever heat energy is lost by the system will be absorbed by its surroundings. Now, let's say you have this beaker in a water bath. 
whatever entropy is gained by the system will be lost by its surroundings. So if the system gains, let's say, uh, 50 kilojoules of entropy, right? then the surroundings would have lost 50 kilojoules of entropy. And when you put the entropy gained by the system plus that lost uh, by the surroundings, then you will end up with a, a value of zero, indicating that for an isolated um, system at uh, equilibrium uh, and, you know, reversible, then the change in entropy is equal to zero. Mm -hmm.